Oh, hey, I'm just trying to preserve what I look like for future generations. Not because I'm vain. This is not a good photo, but because there are all sorts of ways to capture someone's visage. Famous artist Andy Warhol used to take Polaroids of paintings of people he made. And before cameras came about, silhouette drawings of your shadow were all the rage. Wow, listen to this guy play. There's also the statue too. Here's a bust of John F. Kennedy. Actually, I think it's a coin bank. Either that or this is a very unfortunate depiction of an exit wound. Anyway, whether it's a photo or a piece of art, these are attempts to capture what people pretty much look like. But when it comes to our ancestors or other creatures before our time, scientists aren't always 100% sure how things appeared before one's eyes. Take dinosaurs. As noted by London's Natural History Museum, preserved dinosaurs with feathers were discovered back in the 90s. But just how many dinos had feathers and which ones is a point of contention among scientists. To be safe, you better skip their depictions in movies like this. And not just because of the feathers, but because of the rest of the content too. But the work to recreate what ancient creatures may have looked like isn't just up to the computer types over at Industrial Light and Magic. It's also the domain of paleo artists like this guy, John Gersh. I definitely have to be very much an artist and very much a scientist when I work on this kind of project. And I have to basically switch heads when I'm working. I have to, I have to make sure that I'm paying attention to aesthetic concerns. Um, things like facial expression and that sort of thing. And I also have to make sure I'm true to the science. Like he said, paleo artists mix artistic skill with scientific knowledge. And here in his studio, he's crafting lifelike models of our ancestral cousins. It's like looking into a mirror, right? So this is a Neanderthal from a site called Shanadar in what is now Iraq, discovered in the 50s, I think. It started changing the way we think about Neanderthals and of course, the caveman image is very difficult to get rid of for some reason, and um, probably the last 10 headlines you've read about Neanderthals is that they weren't as stupid as we thought. So how does he reconstruct Neanderthals like this guy? Well, he uses whatever evidence happens to be available. If he's got the dimensions of a Neanderthal eye socket handy, he'll use that to predict the size of a Neanderthal eyeball. To make guys like these, a face is cast in clay over a skull, and then he goes in there to construct the thing muscle by muscle, gland by gland, before making a mold upon which he makes a silicone reconstruction. And to give accurate hair plugs to this disembodied ancient head, our paleo artist here studies fossils all over the world, and he even had to carry out dissections of apes and human bodies in order to hone his craft. In my training and also in my early years of my art career, I was doing a lot of paleontology focused art in a sort of general way, but my first love was always human evolution because I think of the evolution of humans on Earth as one of the most remarkable points in the history of life. Other choices the paleo artist makes are speculative. Did Neanderthals have eyebrows, for instance? Or did they go full Jason Biggs back in the day, circa my best friend's girl? Now this work isn't being done just to please whatever ABC executive is probably actively considering a reboot of that Geico caveman show now that the writer's strike is over. Recent scientific research has suggested that ancient hominids like Neanderthals may share more DNA with humans than we originally thought to believe. While that doesn't mean the show is a documentary, the paleo artist here says it's important to reshape the perception of how we think about our ancient ancestors. These were complex beings. These weren't the brutish, brutish cavemen of popular mythology. And so I wanted to convey an individual a sort of a wistful expression. Well, he certainly nailed it with this guy, who seems to be longing for the rest of his face. 